Addressing the Risks of Forced Labor During Employment The employer should provide migrant workers with post-arrival orientation in a language that the workers understand. Signs, symbols, and other indicators related to health and safety hazards in the workplace should be highlighted so that migrant workers can understand them. Employers are encouraged to employ an on-site migrant workers coordinator conversant in both the languages of the migrant workers and the employer. Migrant workers should be given a worker's handbook and any factory regulations in a language they understand. Migrant workers should be paid their regular wage during post-arrival orientation. Post-arrival orientation contents Post-arrival orientation should cover Malaysian culture and common practices Basic local language skills Companies' expectations on workers' rights, duties and responsibilities Applicable laws and regulations How the salary is paid and guidance on remittances services Safekeeping of personal documents Working hours and production requirements Workplace policies, rules and regulations Basic job training Occupational safety and health Grievance channels and processes Medical benefits Wage payments During employment, forced labour practices may occur the following Fair Employment Guidelines eliminate risks of forced labour. Timely payment of wages directly into the worker's bank account. Keep accurate records of wage payments and calculations. Comply with national minimum wages requirements. Establish standardised wage system and payslip that provides workers with clear and transparent information on wages, including hours worked, wage rates, overtime, and any lawful deductions. Pay wages not later than the seventh day of the wage period and avoid non-payment or delayed payment. When a delay is unavoidable, the permission of the Director General of Labor must be obtained. Wage deductions and in-kind payments for loans or advances, both employer and worker should have an agreement on the terms of payment. All payments must be issued with receipts. Deduction from wages shall not be made with the aim of indebting a worker and binding worker to employment. Any legal deduction shall not exceed 50% of the monthly wages of the worker. Payments in kind including goods or services, accommodation, vouchers or coupons, shall not be used as payment of wages. Workers shall not be compelled to purchase goods or services from any particular store or service provider assigned by employers. Workers shall not be held in debt bondage. Any advance provided to workers shall be in accordance with the Employment Act 1955. Working hours, rest day, holiday and leave entitlement. Workers must not be forced to work overtime above the limits stipulated in the Employment Act and the Employment Limitations on Overtime Work regulations and under a menace of a penalty or threat of dismissal. Never use threats to make workers work more overtime hours than allowed by the law. Make sure the workers are given appropriate rest time and weekly rest days in accordance with the Employment Act 1955. 
Make sure the workers are entitled to paid holiday, annual leave, and sick leave in accordance with the Employment Act 1955. If workers are required to work overtime, work on rest day or public holiday, they must be paid according with the provision in the Employment Act 1955. Disciplinary and Grievances Measures Establish a strict policy on preventing violence, harassment, abuse, and coercion, and train all relevant personnel on their respective roles and responsibilities under the policy. Establish a formal mechanism for migrant workers to lodge complaints and seek remedy without fear, including mechanisms to report violations anonymously, taking into consideration language and cultural barriers. Disciplinary measures should not include sanctions that result in an obligation to work. Passports and personal documents. Do not force workers to surrender their passports or personal documents as such practices are prohibited under the Passport Act 1966. Employers should keep only copies of a worker's passport and work permits. Employers should provide a safe place where workers could keep their passports and personal documents. If migrant workers specifically request the employer to keep their passports and personal documents for safekeeping, the employer should develop relevant written procedures and designate a focal person to ensure that workers have access to the documents without restrictions. Freedom of movement. If accommodation is provided, make sure the worker's movement is not restricted outside working hours. Any form of coercion shall not be used to physically confine workers at the dormitory. Do not lock the doors to the workplace, even during work hours or dorms to prevent workers from leaving. Do not use penalties to enforce a curfew and do not hire security guards to restrict workers' movement. Accommodation If the accommodation is provided by employers, the employers should ensure that the dormitories are clean, safe and provide reasonable living space and in compliance with Act 446. Employers should provide workers information about accommodation, any cost involved, and transport options to and from the factory. Employers should develop rules and regulations of the accommodation and migrant workers should be given the option whether to live in the accommodation or not. Termination of Employment Employers may terminate the contract prematurely without notice or compensation, for example, for gross misconduct, in accordance to the employer's disciplinary procedures. Workers may terminate the contract prematurely without notice or penalty in the event of harassment, abuse, or other serious violation of the workers' rights by the employers, including failure to pay wages or the contractual terms and conditions of employment have been unilaterally changed by employer. Serious ill health as certified by an independent doctor. Extenuating circumstances such as the death or serious illness of a family member or other family emergency with satisfactory proof to be provided to employers. If migrant workers voluntarily terminate the contract of employment prematurely, without providing reasonable notice and without the fault of employers, workers are to pay the employer the notice period and or other compensation as stipulated in the contract. If employers prematurely terminate the contract without cause, employers to pay for the notice period any applicable termination benefits or compensation in accordance with terms and conditions 
of employment. Final wages. Upon termination of employment, the migrant worker should receive all outstanding remuneration, if any, including wages, bonus, and overtime pay or other benefits for work performed, including severance payments normally due prior to repatriation. Employers may make deductions for any outstanding payment due to authorities and employers such as income tax payment, authorized deduction for meals, accommodation or services, or notice payment, as stipulated in the Employment Act, or terms and conditions of employment if workers terminate the contract prematurely without cause and notice. Repatriation Upon completion of the employment contract, the employers should pay for the cost of the workers' return airfare to the source country as part of the repatriation process. For premature termination, on a case-by-case -case basis, employers should consider paying for the cost of repatriation if the premature termination is due to employers' breach of terms and conditions of contract or not due to the fault of the worker. Employers shall not be responsible for the cost of repatriation for summary dismissal and premature termination by workers without cause. <laughs>